Shalom Aleichem and welcome to Chabad and Friends. I want to talk about Rab Moshe Feinstein, Harav, Rab Hagoin, Harav Moshe Feinstein, the Paisa Kadoir, the final authority when it, when it came and comes to halachic rulings, and his relationship with Lubavitch and with the Rebbe is part, in particular. In the 1940s, Rabbi Moshe was invited to 770 to give a shear as a trial to be taken as the Rosh Hashiva for 770. Although Rabbi Mentlik was in the yeshiva then, but for whatever reason, the pre de Kerebe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchok, wanted to have someone like Rabbi Moshe to be officially the Rosh Hashiva. And he came, and they wanted to take him, although he was a, a Litvak, a Litvisha. But Rabbi Moshe, for whatever reason, he didn't say, but he said he doesn't want it, he doesn't want the position. This was at a time when Rabbi Ruven Grozovsky, a, a Rosh Hashiva in Teravadas, the son-in-law of the famous Raborg Ber, laid with the, the Rosh Hashiva of Kamenetz. He had Yechidus with the previous Rebbe in the 1940s, sometime between 1940 and 1944. And there were issues which I've also written about in my book, Liquid and Lubavitch, with the Vadat Sola, with the funds given to to help the, the survivors, the refugees in Japan and Shanghai, which included students from the Lubavitch Yeshiva, the Lublina Yeshiva, and the Mir Yeshiva. And for whatever reason, during some of the time when they were there, some of the funds were not given to the Hasidish, the students of the Hasidish yeshivas. Only given it was only given to the students of the Mir Yeshiva. And this is an entire discussion for itself. And again, uh, I've written extensively with sources and, and and documents. And if you're interested in that, you should read the book that I wrote called Lakewood and Lubavitch. Reb Reuven wanted to see if he can close the gap and bring Sholem between the previous Rebbe and Reb Aaron Kotler and Reb Avram Kalmanovitz who were representing the Vada Yeshivas and for their reasoning they felt that the money should only be given to the what they call the Bnei Yeshivas meaning the, the mere Yeshiva students. When he went into Yechidus with to the Frida Kerebbe, the Frida Kerebbe lauded and praised his father-in-law, Rabbi Baruch Ben. And the Frida Kerebbe said, and I heard this from the grandson of Rabbi Ruben Grozovsky, Rabbi Avram Elia Grozovsky. He said that the Frida Kerebbe said about his father-in-law, about Rabbi Ruben's father-in-law, Rabbi Baruch Ben, that he had Ava Vayira love and all for God, even in his payas. Whatever that means, whether it's a spiritual Kabbalistic idea or just a uh, an expression that that's how holy it was, that even in just in his payas he had Ava Vayira. We'll leave for another time, but that that was the set statement that the previous Rebbe said, and he spoke very highly about him, and Reb Ruven was very surprised. He didn't think, for whatever reason, that the Frida Kerebbe, that the Rebbe Rayatz, had such respect for his father-in-law. And that made a big impression on Rebbe Ruven. 
we find in the Igris Kodesh of Tavshin Dalit, 1944, that the Histadrus Talmide Kamenets, which was a, the, 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 a group of Balabatim and students that learned in Kamenets who were, came to this country, sent an invitation for the Frida Kerebbe to come to a, an annual dinner. I believe Hey Kislev was the yard site of Rabbarach Ber, and they would gather, gather together, and they sent an invitation. So, so this, uh, uh, this, this grandson of Reb Rubin told me he believes that came as a response to the good feelings that the Frida Kerebbe told Reb Ruven about his father-in-law, so they sent him the invitation, because otherwise, why, why are they sending the Frida Kerebbe? He's a Rebbe, a Chesidish Rebbe, well, why should he come to, to the Stadrus, the, the, the Kamenetz Yeshiva tell me, the students' uh, event, they're celebrating a Baruch Ber's uh, yard site. It, it doesn't, doesn't add up. Reb Ruven, Grozovsky, walked away with a very warm feeling. When, a, when a Yisrael Gustman, I spoke about him last week, came, a few weeks ago, came to this country and he was asked to be the Rashiv and Lubavitch. He asked two people. One was Rabbi Moshe Feinstein and the other was another big Rosh Hashiva and the big Rosh Hashiva told him he should not take the job in 770 and Amosha told him he should take the job in 770 Amosha Feinstein was very much respectful of Lubavitch and that's why there are letters between him and the Rebbe and that's why he came to the Rebbe in the, I think for a wedding of Abram Shmuel Levin in 1974 and he had Yechidus for an hour Abram Shmuel himself told me this and there's a picture of Rabbi Groner helping him put on his coat to go out to the chuppah he came to be Masada the Kedushin for Abram Shmuel Levin who was his secretary or Rabbi Moshe's secretary in the Agudas Harabonim which he was the head of, Rabbi Moshe was the head of, and Abraham Shmuel Levin was the secretary. And then, of course, with the Rabbi Tam, the Rebbe wrote to him and said he would get him an, a great cipher, Yerushalayim, he got him Rabbi Zirkin to make for Rabbi Moshe a pair of Rabbi Tams, which he put on every day. So we see the yachas, the positive attitude, sigh of Rabbi Ruven Grozovsky, with the Frida Kerebe, Sai Moshe Feinstein with the Frida Kerebe and our Rebbe. And this again points to the same thing that these are Litoyim, these are Litfax, Talmide Chachomim, and one has nothing to do with the other. We're all one. This is one Mahalach, this is another Mahalach, and people work together. Good things come from it.